You know, sometimes I think about how good God is. And I don't need music. I don't need, I love the worship team, but I don't have to have the worship team. I can praise God just on what I know he's done for me, what I remember he's done for me. I can just praise him for that alone. But I haven't always been like that. Sometimes I would come to church and I'd look up on stage at the choir. I have a Baptist background. I'd look up on stage at the choir and I'd see who was going to sing because, you know, we like to hear certain people sing and we like to hear our favorite songs and then we know we can get into the spirit when so-and-so sings. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. When we come to church, we should be bringing worship in here with us, not waiting to meet it when we get here. Because if we did that, then the praise and worship team would be icing on the cake. They wouldn't have to create the cake and the icing. Amen? So just something to think about. Worship and praise should start at home. Amen. At this time, I'd like you to stand for the reading of the word. It's going to be found in Ecclesiastes 3, beginning with the first verse. For everything, there is a season, not some things, not most things, but for everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under the sun, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, I'll say that again, a time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And drop down to verse 11. Yet, God has made everything beautiful for its own time. In the King James Version, it says, Yet, God has made everything beautiful for his own time. Father God, I just want to thank you, God, as you just bless the word tonight. I yield totally to you, Father God. It doesn't matter what's on this paper, Father God. I yield to you. Do what you want to do the way you want to do it, Father God. I decrease that you would increase, Father God. And I ask you that you would speak. That you would speak mightily, Father God. That you would dig deep, Father God. That you would touch every person in here, every family represented, Father God. So much so, Father God, that when they leave here, they'll be so full that when they get in contact with their family, God, that their family will feel your presence, Father God. We're asking you right now, Father God, that you would be God all by yourself, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As I said, I'm really, really excited to be here tonight. <laughs> there was a time when I could not even say that. <laughs> but part of what I'm going to be talking about tonight has a lot to do with the fact that I'm no longer 
trying to hide. I'm no longer trying to stay under the radar. You all know what I'm talking about. When you're capable of doing more for God than you're doing, but because nobody knows about it, you don't do it. Or you kind of treat your service to God like a salad bar, where you kind of pick and choose who you serve, what you serve, and when you serve it. But I've come to understand that that season, that era in my life is over. There really are five seasons in a year. Five, not four. There's winter, there's summer, there's spring, there's fall, and then there's the season that you create by your disobedience. I say that because when we operate outside the will of God, when we make decisions that he did not approve of, then in essence, we are creating another season for us to have to go through. See, in seasons, there are times when we are planting flowers and we should be pulling weeds. There are always signs that a season is changing if we choose to listen. The title of this message is Understanding Your Season. Understanding your season. Now, season is defined as a period marked by a special activity. That's what a season is. It's a period marked by special activity. Now, that special activity has already been predestined by God. That's the first thing that we have to understand. That activity's already been predestined. So we don't get to adjust it. We don't get to slow it down. But we do get to extend it if we are disobedient. One thing that I love about God as I was studying seasons is he told me to look up What causes the change in the color of leaves on a tree? And when I looked that up, there's a chemical that God placed in plants and trees called chlorophyll. And the chlorophyll responds to the light and it also responds to temperature. So the brighter the light, the warmer the climate, the more chlorophyll is produced that keeps the leaves and plants green. But what he also put is a timer inside of these plants that recognize daylight saving time. They recognize when the temperature goes down. They recognize when it gets darker earlier. And so those times when those things are going on, it's not producing that chlorophyll, and it's not getting fed. So that's when the leaves start to turn brown and orange. And the thing that I need you to remember is, all of this is going on all these other three months, these three seasons, but you can't see it until it's time. Now, if God, who made us, can put a chemical in a plant or a tree to let it know when its season is time to change, we don't have chlorophyll. We got something better. We got the Holy Spirit. We got the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit doesn't decrease, it increases. So really the measure of the Holy Spirit that you receive is connected to really how much you want, how susceptible, how open you are to receiving. 
I also found out that the top of the tree is what turns first because it is the furthest from the root. But it's closest to the S-U-N. Now for us, we don't have to be at the top of anything to be close to the S-O-N. So we don't have any excuse as to why we don't have access to know when our seasons are changing. In the first verse of Ecclesiastes, it says, to everything there is a season, which means that everything is already marked by a period of special activity according to God. The verse goes on to say that every season has a time frame and a purpose. So the questions that we should be asking are not how long will my season last, but we need to be asking what season am I in and what is the purpose of my season? If you want to get the right answer, you have to ask the right question, right? Point number one, determine the season that you are in. How do you do that? Well, you look at what you're going through. Do you feel like you're being tested, stretched? Is it your finances? Is it your marriage? Do you have a problem with forgiveness? Do you have a problem with being committed? Is your integrity kind of shady? You got seasons of self-discovery. Either you're leading or you're being led. Maybe it's in the wrong order. Maybe you're leading when you should be led, or maybe vice versa. Do you know what season you're in? Are you in a dry season? What you are going through is an indication of the season that you are currently in. Now, it would be so easy to say, Sister Madeline, I really don't know, and I would say I don't believe you. Because number one, we are all in a season. Number two, we all been in a season long enough to know what season we're in. What we don't want to answer is how I got in that season. Do I really want to do what I need to do to get out of the season? See, we don't want to answer that question. One of my seasons that God kept, well, let, let me rephrase that. One of, the, one of those seasons that I kept myself in by my choices was letting go or staying too long. Because as long as I thought that I could change the situation, as long as I thought I could make something happen, I thought if I was just a little patient, a little longer, if I gave a little more, if I gave some space, if I gave more, that maybe that situation would work out the way I saw it working out. And God had shown me so many times that season was up. But I kept thinking, but I haven't tried this yet. Yeah, have y'all done that? Yeah. I haven't tried. I, I, I heard you, God, but if you just, I just need to try one more thing, and then I'll be absolutely sure that I'm done. If I try this, then I'll feel good about closing the door. I'm going to give them one more chance. You know, that saying that says that when someone shows you who they are the first time, believe them, it's true. Situations only bring out who you really are. And just because you act some way one time doesn't mean you won't act that way again, given the same set of circumstances. I want to share a story with you. There's a story about a frog. You take a pot, 
put water in the pot, and you place a frog in this pot. Now the pot is very low, and the frog can jump out at any time. Keep that in mind. He can jump out at any time. So they took this pot with the water, and it was room temperature, and they put it on a stove. And they turned the burner under the pot on low. The frog began to sense the change of the temperature of the water. But what you don't know about a frog is, frogs can adjust their temperature to the climate that they're in. So we know about that, don't we? And so the frog began to feel the temperature of this water rising, but it was still, the, the flames were still on low. And he just sat there. So they turned it up to a second level. And he began to feel the heat from the bottom of the pot. He began to feel the temperature of the water change again. So he picked up a leg, picked up another leg, but he put the leg down in the same spot. He put the other leg down in the same spot and he adjusted his temperature again. They turned it up the final time to boiling. The water is boiling now and the frog is feeling the temperature of this water boiling and he begins to move around, but he doesn't change his location. He changes his position, but he doesn't change his location. There's a difference. He changes his position, but not his location. And he moves from side to side and he moves around in the pot. As the water is boiling him, he moves around in the pot that he could jump out at any time. He just keeps adjusting his body temperature to the climate that he is in. And what happened? He died. He died. We do this every day. We make a decision every day to stay in something that God told us to get out of. He gave us a way of escape and we are still there. The temperature is rising. We are uncomfortable. We don't like it. But knowing how hot the fire is going to get, because I've been here before, I'd be willing to deal with that than to deal with feeling nothing at all. What kind of decision is that? You have to understand the season that you're in. The second thing that you need to understand is the purpose of your season. And point A under two is building your endurance or stamina. Because that's what God has to do in order to get us in a certain place. And the truth of the matter is, unless certain things happen, unless we're put in a certain position, unless certain type of pressure is allowed to touch us, we will not move or we will not change. He knows because he's already predetermined our season. He knows how long he needs to leave us in that pot. He knows how long. He knows how long he needs to leave us in that pot in order to build our endurance. Now, some of us can relate to this because we don't really want our endurance built up. We just want something different. We just want the pain to stop. 
We just want a different day. We just want things to get better. But getting better for us would be just maybe a little less pain the next day. It's not totally deliver, total deliverance. Can you imagine that you would rather stay in a situation? You have an opportunity for total deliverance, but you don't want that. Because remember, feeling that pain, being uncomfortable, is better than feeling nothing at all. A second thing in regards to the purpose of your season, God is building your trust in him. He's building your trust. I can honestly say, had I not, had I not been through the things that I have been through in my life, I'd, I would have not picked any of those things to learn the things that I learned. But I have come to understand and I have come to appreciate that I needed exactly what I got in the measure that I got it in order to get where I am and stay and stand where I am today. Had I not learned how to be able to praise God for real, when I lost my mom or when I lost my sister 10 weeks later, when my son was diagnosed with cancer, if I did not, <laughs> If God had not taught me how to stand, because if you'd have asked me a few days before those things happened, I could not have told you that I would have responded the way that I did. And a lot of people say things because it sounds good, you know, because they feel like it's the Christian thing to say. But I can say it because I mean it. I can say it because I've been through it that I love God more now than I did before I went through all the things that I went through. Do I have an answer for why those things happen? No. But part of maturity is learning how to love God and praise God even when you don't have an answer and being real about it. Because there are a lot of things you're not going to get an answer to until you stand before him. And you get to decide, I get to decide, am I going to stop praising and worshiping him and acknowledging who he is based on what has happened to me? Because he's still God. He's still God. No matter what, he is still God. C, the third thing for the purpose of your season God is building your IQ. And you're thinking IQ. Now IQ usually means intelligence quotient. But I'm not talking about that. When I say that God is building your IQ, he's building your I quit. He's building you up so what made you quit the last time, it's going to take more this time to make you quit. He's building your IQ. He's building it. And unfortunately, some things are going to have to hit you hard in order to allow him to build the kind of IQ that he needs you to have so you can keep going and then you can go back and help somebody else. One thing I've learned about God is just like wounds, he heals you out in public. It would be so nice to be able to understand I got pain and not everybody know about it. But that's not the way it goes because God does not get the glory for that. He does not. He gets no glory from that. And he used to ride me so hard about that because I was always quick to praise him, but I praise him in my house. I praise him in quiet. Nobody would know what I was going through. He said, what good does that do? What good is silent praise? I can't get any glory from that. I can appreciate that you appreciate, but I need to see, I need other people to know. I need other people to see. It's okay. It's okay to show your wounds. It's okay to have those trench coat moments. It's okay to do that. Because God gets the glory from that. 
He gets the glory from that. He gets the glory from that. Number three. Understand that God will change your season when something in you needs to change. You know, nothing that God does is just arbitrary. He's not doing it because he's bored. He's not doing it because he just wants to see how we're going to react. Everything that he does is strategic. Everything that he does is trying to drive us to a certain place, drive something out of us, kill something in us, make us run to him. Everything that he does, everything that he does, and he does not waste anything, any season that we go through, he does not waste. Even the ones, even the fifth seasons that we create, he doesn't waste it. He does not waste it. He doesn't waste it. There's a quote by John Max Maxwell that says, change is inevitable, growth is optional. Change is inevitable, growth is optional. Which means we get to decide every season that we complete, every time we go through something, we get to decide, am I going to learn something from this? Instead of watching the clock to see how long this is going to last or when is this going to be over, when is this going to get better, we get to decide whether we're going to learn something from this. And the thing about a season, one of the definitions says, a period in which a place is most frequented, which implies to me that we can create our own season. We can stay there if we so choose. We can leave if we so choose. We can extend it if we so choose. It's a choice. It is a choice. It's a choice. And it would be so much simpler sometime when you don't have choices, when you just have to do. But that's not the way that God works. Because if it was, then everybody would be serving him. Period. Even the angels have a choice. Even the angels have a choice. So we don't have any excuses about not knowing what our season is and not knowing the purpose of our season. There are no excuses. There are decisions, but they're not excuses. There are choices, but they're not excuses. They are not, there are not excuses. One thing that I have come to understand in serving God is that he does not need me. As much as I enjoy serving, I understand that if I don't do what he tells me to do, the way he tells me to do it, he can go and get somebody else. And chances are, I'm not the first person he asked. Chances are, I'm probably not the millionth person he asked. But I'm grateful that he did ask. I'm grateful that he did get to me. And I don't want him to pass me up because I didn't want to do what he told me to do. Because I didn't want to lay anything down. Because I didn't want to make the sacrifice. Because I didn't want to go through the season. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live like that. 
One thing that he told me about this word is that this word is for people who are hungry. Everybody's not hungry. If you want a snack, this word's not for you. But if you are hungry, if you're hungry to know what season you're in, if you're hungry to know the purpose of your season, if you're wanting God to end that fifth season that you created, if you're out of position, if you're in the wrong location, God is here to fix all that. He's here to fix all that. He said, you know, Madeline, this is not going to be the kind of message where people stand up and shout. and It's not going to be that kind of message. This is not that kind of message. This is the kind of message that you chew on and you swallow, and then you come to the altar and get it done. It's that kind of message. It's that kind of message, period. You get to make a decision. And the thing about serving God is you have to keep making the same decision over and over and over again every day. Every day. You don't get to just say, okay, yes to God one time. Because the enemy keeps coming. Well, your, every yes you got, he's back again. Just to see if you really meant it. So at this time, The table of the Lord is open. If you are hungry and if you want it, please come and get it.